Now the Bible does talk about one unforgivable sin. Did Naomi Judd's decision to take her own life keep her out of heaven? Or does God's grace and salvation cover those who decided to take life and death into their own hands? The answers that the Bible have to give might surprise you and stick around until the end where I share my own personal opinion about what happened to Naomi Judd. Hey y'all, I'm Brylan, and in this video I want to talk about what happened to Naomi Judd. The news coming out that she did take her own life. Are there consequences for that? She did claim to have a relationship with Jesus. She did claim faith in God. So I want to look at what the Bible has to say about what happened to Naomi Judd and what happens to so many more people. Real quick, I want to take a few seconds and tell you about today's sponsor. It's the Daily Grace Company. What a wonderful company this is. If you need Bible study tools, journals, books and guides, prayer cards, Bibles, as well as highlighters, all kinds of things to grow in your relationship with the Lord, then check out our link in the description below. When you use our link, it helps this channel out. We would really appreciate it. Also, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? We would absolutely love that. And hit that thumbs up button as well so YouTube can push this video out to more people. I'd really appreciate it. Now, I don't want to downplay mental illness or depression or anything like that. I know that Naomi Judd did struggle with that. She struggled with mental illness in her life. She had a long struggle with mental illness, and that was, uh, that was made uh, public quite a few years ago. Um, it's very real and very serious. As a kid, I was diagnosed with severe depression and uh, uh, something called agoraphobia as well which is a fear of crowds and uh, I grew up without my mom I grew up in a single family home my dad raised me and my brother by himself so as a result from not having my mom in my life there was a lot of damage mentally and emotionally in my life uh, and in my brother's life as well and I have family members that are clinically mentally ill uh, and, and literally cannot take care of themselves. So I have a very personal experience with mental illness, with depression, with anxiety. Now Naomi Judd did claim to be a Christian. She did claim to have a relationship with Jesus. She claimed to believe in God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, 25 through 28, nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. You know, the Bible is very clear that Jesus came to die once and for all, for all sin that has ever been committed, past, present, and future, uh, in your life and in my life, in Naomi's life. Uh, but it is something that we have to recognize and we have to repent of our sin and give it to Jesus and he will forgive us of that sin. Now the Bible does talk about one unforgivable sin, which is called blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now to blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to constantly, unrepentantly deny the Holy Spirit's work in your life. To attribute what the Holy Spirit does to the enemy, to Satan, and to continue on in that unrepentant, degenerate lifestyle to your death. Now, if you're worried that you've committed that unforgivable sin, then the very fact that you're worried about it shows that you haven't. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that God will deliver us from any and all afflictions, whether it be mental, emotional, physical, He can deliver us. It doesn't mean that deliverance will always be what we expect it to be. In Psalm 34, 17 through 19, it says, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. 
The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Now, this does not mean that we will not suffer afflictions. As the verse says itself, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And deliverance from those afflictions is not always what we think it should be. Now, the Apostle Paul uh, could relate to this, absolutely. Paul talked about having a thorn in his side. We see this in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times... I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now we see here that Paul pleaded with the Lord to deliver him from this thorn in his flesh. But God had other plans. God knew that without that thorn in Paul's flesh, Paul wouldn't rely on God the way that he needed to. So God allowed that thorn to stay. Throughout walking with the Lord, Paul realized that it is through his weaknesses, that it is through that thorn that God allowed in his life, that it truly helped keep him dependent on Jesus Christ. God's ways are not always what we want them to be or what we think they should be, but they are always the best way for us. You know, since taking your life is really a sign of utter hopelessness, you are at the very bottom, the very end of everything, then the question has to be asked, did you really ever have faith in God to begin with? Now, I am not discounting Naomi's uh, mental illness or depression or her anxiety in any way, shape, or form. But the question still stands. If you have no hope, then where was the God of hope in your life? Now, God says that he knew us while we were still in our mother's womb. God knows exactly the plan for our lives from beginning until end, every single one of us. So what Naomi did is not a surprise to God whatsoever. But again, because you're purposely taking control of your life away from God and ending something that God has given you, you have to ask the question, did you really know God? But again, remember, Scripture tells us that we will not be without affliction. It also says that affliction will never overtake us, that we will never have more than we can handle, and God will always see us through. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Scripture is clear that there is always a way of escaping hopelessness, affliction. We do not need to be tempted by sin and fall to it every time we can find a way out, and that way out is through Jesus Christ. Personally, I don't think it's worth finding out if you'll go to heaven or not after the fact of you taking your own life. This is eternity at stake here. And while I personally didn't know Naomi Judd, I was very familiar with her growing up. And yes, she did claim to have a relationship with Jesus. She did claim to believe in God. And I do think that God is bigger than any one sin that we commit if we are repentant and genuinely believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior. I do pray that Naomi Judd did have a personal relationship, a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ in that her final sin was covered by the blood of Jesus 
Only her and God know that now. I'll end with this promise. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I would love to hear from you in the comments below and know your thoughts on this matter. We can have a discussion down there. I would love to have a conversation with you. Please hit that subscribe button. Be a part of this community with us. We put out content almost every single day as well as two live streams a week. And hit that thumbs up button if you got some value from this video. I would really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.